everybody, and welcome to Highlands High School for Homecoming. Tonight, the Highlands Golden Rams host the powerhouse South Fayette Lions. Along with the Dean, Mike Choma, this is Mike Pavlik, Julie McCorkle upstairs, and Ken Wood is our spotter tonight. And Dean, the Rams about to come on the field, a homecoming night. You see the moon shining brightly above Golden Rams Stadium. Six foot five, 290 pound Joaquin Roman down there waving a flag, calling everybody up here, Mike. Uh, tough task tonight with this great South Fayette team in here. But it's homecoming, anything can happen. And here come the Rams onto the field. Well, the South Bay Lions team come in here. They're winners of 65 consecutive conference games. You want to start with that? Um, yeah, Mike, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> how do you do? How do you beat somebody like that? They've lost two regular season games since 2011. They're the defending WPIL champions, and their quarterback Naman Alameda last week threw for 398 yards and six touchdowns. The 398 yards is only the fourth best passing day in South Bay history. Mike, they are a system, and that system works. He says he's a system quarterback. That system has produced WPL championships. We're going to see the ball in the air a lot tonight. He started out shaking them, Mike. In his first game against uh, Upper St. Clair, he threw four interceptions, then he settled down. And since then, only three interceptions the rest of the year, 24 touchdowns so far. And, Mike, he has a 6'4 backup in a kid named Lutz. If he can't come through, they'll go to him. So the wealth of quarterbacks continues at South Fayette. All right, let's, let's talk about that because the way they throw the ball and the strength of the Highlands team this year has been their pass defense. They're allowing only 72 yards a game through the air. The most yards passing they've allowed this year was to Keystone Oaks' Logan Shrub, who threw for 167. Our pass defense is much improved, but they've never seen anything like this. There's no doubt about it, Mike. So it's our strength, our pass defense against their strength, which is their passing game. Uh, I would say this. One of the things that other teams haven't tried to do is put some heat on Alameda. You said you watched some film. He stands back there. You'll know the where to find him. Yep. Um, and they did not got to him last week, but the point is they throw the ball so often. I counted three times they handed it off to a running back in the first half last week. And they're quick releases too, right? The ball's out of his hand, one, two, three, so if you bring the heat, you got to be effective with it and uh, I would say this, we have nothing to lose, let's throw the Haas at him and see what happens. Highlands won the toss and deferred their option to the second half, South Fayette will get the ball. Well, they're, they're banking on the defense, aren't they? Uh, I wouldn't do that, I'd take the ball. You don't want the to have the ball. The last five Highlands get, get, the shutouts all over the place. We had five shutouts this year, four in a row. What do you what do you attribute that to? And they, by the way, the team that has scored first has won every game. Yeah, we've won two of them. They've won three of them. I think the most important thing is this team plays better with the lead. So that's why I would have taken the ball right there. I would not have deferred it because get the ball, get a lead. We've done it twice. We won both those games. Come playing from behind with a young team like this. I think it's tough. Now, last year we gave up 54 points, but we scored 21. So I think, like I said, let's get on the board early. Let's throw the Haas at him and see what we can do on his beautiful night with the beautiful moon. Maybe the moon will have something to do with it. If you've been putting on that much-needed work around the house, why not let the pros at Beanie Home Renovations help you kick off football season with a new kitchen, bathroom, game room, or addition to make your home a winner. With over a 1,000 years of combined experience, owner Brian E. and his team of professionals at Beanie guarantee that your job will be completed on time exactly the way you want it, and in plenty of time to have that championship celebration. Customer service is their top priority. Give Brian a call today, 724-351-3172 for a free estimate. Or visit their Facebook page, Beanie Home Renovations, where the B is always busy. Rams will kick off left to right here in this first quarter. And good luck with the South Fayette numbers. Yeah, they're terrible. They're white on white with a little green trim. We apologize again. We didn't make the uniforms. You'll be able to see our numbers quite clearly. Though. On the near side of the field, number 15, Joey Audia. Whip kick is free. Javon Goodnight. The Rams kick it an onside kick down inside the 40, and it's recovered by number 28, Shea Aiken. Hit him square in the face, Mass Mike. And that's where the Lions will start, first and 10 on the 39-yard yard line. The starting lineups will be brought to you by Dan Timmons Painting in Natrona Heights since 1979. They got you covered. The only thing I can think of giving them the ball first, Mike, we've worked on some trick defense and maybe, well, with their uh, Well, they worked on an onside kick, too, and maybe that's why they wanted to kick that's off. That's right, too. That's a good So point. that, of course, I have... 
a man in motion, and that's Franklin, who didn't play much last week out of the backfield. Showing him blitz. First and 10 at the 39. And Alameda is back. Uh, and we have whistles. Saunders before. Did the Rams jump offside, or did the one of the big ones on the south? Yeah, south Fayette's going to get caught for a false start. Referee tonight is Mike Gaffney, who is a very good football and basketball official. Jeremiah Saunders made him jump a little early. Their offensive line is number 59, left tackle, Dom Thomas. The left guard is 72, Logan Petetti. The center is 52, Quentin Franklin. Right guard, 73, Jackson Lutzecki. Right tackle is 51, Brian Spurlock. And we'll get to the others after this play. Franklin, the single setback. This is Audie in motion. First and 15. And the give is to Franklin off the left side. Tries to find some running room, but nothing much to be had as he's brought down up over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Kyron Long was down there. So was Jeremiah Nelson for the Rams. And it's going to bring up a long second down and 11 yards to go. Nelson had 14 tackles last week, and uh, Saunders had 12. They're going quick here. Last week, Shea Aiken got the bulk of the carries in the backfield. Oh, movement Rams that. jump this time. That time was Max, Max West. Weston did it. Mike, their position people, uh, they have at the quarterback, we mentioned already, Naaman Alamada. The running back, 28, Shea Aiken. Wide receiver number one, Charlie Rossi. 18, Ryan McGuire. And 15, Joey Audio. You notice they moved. They, they, they changed the Rams' defensive front. Nelson's playing nose, and Joaquin's playing tackle. They had moved those guys around with Clark not in there. Second week out with the ankle injury, Mike. Alameda back, throws it to the far side. It's pulled in by Rossi. Gets the first down across the 50. Tripped up by Brock White, but it's a first down, South Fayette, at the Highlands 48-yard line. That's Charlie Rossi, the son of the coach. He's the only returning receiver on this team, Mike, and uh, had 38 catches last year for 613 yards. And, uh, again, you mentioned coach's kid. And they fire it to the near side of the field. Alameda's pass is complete. And the Rams are gang tackling the man with the football, and that's Rossi again. Johnny Kreis, Caleb White, and Khalil Long out there. Second and five. They go really fast. Wide open. And the pass is complete to Audie on the far side of the field. Shake and bake inside to 30 and down to the 28-yard line. Kreis and... Loveland make the tackle. That's Audia. And they are really going quickly. Yep. They hear the coaches in the other room. I call her go, go, go. Here they go. First and 10 at the 28. And the handoff is to Franklin. Franklin is grabbed by Joaquin Roman, just grabbed a handful of shirt and wouldn't let him get anywhere. <laughs> Saunders. Along with Nelson, too. Second down and seven. Here they go again, Mike. Don't worry about that 40-second clock. No, no worry about that. Second down, seven. South Fayette at the Highlands, 15. Just underway, first quarter on homecoming at Golden Rams Stadium. Looks like they moved early. Alameda back, and he fires it over the middle on a beautiful slant. It's caught. Flowers had great coverage, but it's pulled in by 23, Luke Shearer, and that's another South Fayette first down. Sean Hawley on the coverage, but again, made the catch, first and goal. Oh, at the 11. 11, yeah, he can make a first down, excuse me. And the handoff is to Franklin, through the middle, on his way to the goal line. Ball's out. He's down. Well, it's because he reached it. His elbow hit, and it popped out of there. So he's going to get the one-yard line. He might have a first down. Saunders. On the tackle, but here they go again, Mike. First and goal at the one. They give us to Franklin off the right side. And I don't know. No, he did not get in. The Rams have stopped him. Saunders and Long. Along with Nelson. Saunders had the original hit on the play. Second and goal at the one. They're wasting no time. They've taken a grand total of three minutes to do this. One inch line, by the way. Nomin Alameda, turn, and it gives us to Franklin. They got him in the backfield, yeah, and down, down he goes. Big defensive stand. Caleb White clapping his hands at the senior running back, Andrew Franklin, and the loss is back to the four-yard line. 
reminds me of Pitt, Mike. They're just lining up and going right at them and thinking they're going to just push them in the end zone. But the Golden Rams answered that time. Going to set up third. And goal, where they, where'd they mark it? At the four? At the four. This is the 10th play of the drive. Right, bring, he's going to pass this time, Mike. Rossi, the motion man. Too far to run it. Franklin, a sidecar. Alameda back, and he fires it. It's caught on a crossing route, and diving is Charlie Rossi for the end zone, and that's a South Bay touchdown. They run crossing routes all yeah. over the place. Guys get picked in the process, and that time Rossi, and they are just so precise on their routes, it's unbelievable. Like Johnny Christ, a little slow getting up there, too. Alameda, five for five on the drive. The kicker is Justin Caputo, number 17, and he'll be on for the extra point. No, 18, they've changed. Ryan McGuire will try it. Told me they used two, Mike. So. Okay. <laughs> Caputo kicked last week. His turn, yeah. Rossi holds it. Men moving all over the place. McGuire's kick is, well, the whistle blew before it happened, so we'll get the call here. South Fayette. Kicker they had last year, Mike, starts for Delaware. He played the whole game against Pitt. Did all the extra points. Remember, he had a big leg. Oh, big leg. So McGuire will try it again. 6 nothing Lions just underway. Rossi the holder. Ball is down, and McGuire's kick is plenty long enough, and it is good. South Fayette leads at 7-0, 8.07 left first quarter. All right, Mike, Planet Fitness, the Heights Plaza in Sharon Heights is your home for the judgment-free zone. Planet Fitness provides a unique setting where everyone, and we mean everyone, is free to work out in a non-intimidating environment for as little as $10 a month. And Ken Wood and I met there today and uh, got to say hello to Tara. Tara's looking for new members. Again, 24-7, work out when you one team 13 to 15 can join a company by an adult 18 or older each time they visit 16 year olds can have their own membership member memberships are available for as low as ten dollars a month stop in and say hi to tara plan of fitness in the heights plaza today tara's a highland grad bike Beautiful shot of the moon here on homecoming. We're eight for eight in weather. Unbelievable. We've had eight beautiful Friday nights. We'll go for nine next week here on senior night and see if we can pull that off. Long term doesn't look good, but just a week away. Oh, it's going to be nice next Friday. I already saw it. Oh, I guess my KDK weather's different than yours. What do you got? The Weather Channel app hasn't hasn't hurt me yet, but well, we'll find out next Friday. It's a How's week that? away. Yeah. You know when to look? Wednesday. <laughs> McGuire kicks it off. Kicks a liner. Takes a bounce. And White up over the 30, the 35, and tripped up as he gets to the 37-yard line. Joey Audio went low to bring him down. It'll be first and 10 for the Rams, and they'll start in good field position out at their 37-yard line. And again, the Highlands offense is led by number 12, Chandler Timmons. Running back 22, Brock White. Caleb White is the fullback. Where's number two? Wide receivers, 26, Johnny Christ, 10, DJ Loveland, and four, Deshaun Hawley. We'll get the lineman after this play. First and 10, Highlands. On their 38, we're going to mark it. White, the sidecar. Timmons out of the shotgun. And four wides. And to give us to White. Tries to get outside to the left. Makes a nice cut. And gets up over the 40 to the 42-yard line. At the bottom of the pile for the Lions is senior inside linebacker Eli Snyder. We'll call him Bubba. How's that sound? It's his dad, <laughs> Bubba. Oh. Do you know the station he's on now? I don't. Isn't it? I'm not sure. Also has a couple of restaurants, too. Don Lyman, Mike, left tackle 54, Jeremiah Saunders, left guard 53, Darren Hildebrand, center of 72, Daniel Timmons, right guard 50, Jeremiah Nelson, right tackle 52, Joaquin Roman. Second and six to give us to White. Cuts it nicely through the middle. Up over the 45, and he's getting close to a first down at the 48-yard line. Snyder makes the tackle again. Let's see what the call is here. Going to be third down and in inches. Wow. Thought he had it, Mike. Oh, they did signal first down now, Mike. Oh, they did? Yep, they okay. gave it to him. A little late. All right, thank you. First and 10 Highlands on their 48. 
Those starting lineups brought to you by Dan Timmons Painting and Atrota Heights to beautify and protect. Call Dan Timmons Painting, 724-224-2851. Dan Timmons Painting got you covered. First down Highlands at the 48. Trailing 7-0. Christ the motion man, and Timmons is going to throw it, and the coverage was tight. Johnny looking for a flag. There sure could have been. Franklin had blanket coverage, and I mean very blanket. He had a hand in his pocket. Like you mentioned, the offensive line for the Golden Rams, uh, only one senior on that offensive line. So Senior night's uh, going to be next week, yep. by the way. Can you believe it? Yeah. Went Good. by pretty fast. Goes it? by fast, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Second and 10, Highlands on their 48. They trail at 7 nothing. Last year's game at South Fayette, they put up 54 points on the Rams in the first half. Yeah, that was something like that. A lot of turnovers they took advantage of. This is Brock, or, uh, Caleb White to the 50, and he's treated rudely and bulldogged to the ground by senior linebacker Nolan Lutz. It'll be third and eight. Their linebacking crew, Mike, number five, Andrew Franklin. You mentioned 22, Nolan Lutz, 37, Eli Snyder, and seven is Tristan. Bell Delia. Third and eight. The ball's at the 50. South Fayette marched at 10 plays on the opening drive, a four minute touchdown drive. Their defensive backfield, 18, Ryan McGuire at corner, 15, Joey Audia, and number one safety, Charlie Rossi. Dad put this kid back there, trust him. And Timmons throws it. It's caught by Brock White. Makes a man miss and is very close. He has the first down at the South Fayette 41-yard line. Franklin brought him down, but White made a good move to get around him and get the first down. A nine-yard pickup. Their defensive line, Mike, 54, Keon Johnson, 52, Quentin Franklin, 59, Dan Thomas, a defensive tackle, and 53, Carson Tucker is the defensive end. You mentioned, Mike, very senior-oriented on offense. No, defense, on defense, but not so on offense. Tells you guys are different guys are playing. Yeah. They get a 66-man roster and 11 seniors. From the eye and Bumble. white, you got it back, juggled though. it, got it back. I think he kicked it up with his, uh, with his thigh. And they're going to give him back to about the line of scrimmage. Rams are very fortunate there. Yeah, that could have been ugly, Mike. Second and 10 at the 41. Deshaun Holly in there with plays. We're noticing Khalil Long in the lineup tonight, Dean, at, uh, at receiver. He's a big target. Six foot four, number 88. His brother Lonnie wore eight. Do you remember that? Yep. Long, Lonnie Long. He won an eight. I said, take 88. It means you're twice as good. <laughs> and, of course, Skyron playing. Play action. Timmons back Nine. over the middle. Oh, Christ has it. Nice move inside the 30 and has a Highlands first down at the South Bay at 26-yard line. 15 yards on that play, Mike. And Johnny Stiffarm, the first tackler. And High is putting a drive together here, Mike. First catch of the night for Johnny Christ. He leads the team in that department. His 22nd reception of the year. First down now. On the Lions, 26. The Rams putting a drive together here, trailing 7-0. Now they're going to throw a Uh-oh. swing pass over to White, and he gets it down to the 25-yard line. He ran over Nolan Lutz, and then Snyder brought him down. Why well, said, uh-oh, Mike, guess I knew it was coming. He was out in the flat unprotected. Give him credit for making that catch. We'll give him a yard on yeah. that. One-yard pickup. But, boy, I tell you what, they were coming. Rams haven't completed many passes to their backs this year, and they've had two here early on. Caleb White's caught eight, and Brock is – that's the first – these are the first two he actually caught. Yeah. He got yards on a hook and lateral. So they had only completed two passes to their running backs all year, and now they have two here on this drive. you got to try to do something different against a team like this. Second and nine. They give us to White. He's through a hole inside the 30 – to 25 to the 24. Snyder again. Big 52, Quentin Franklin at 5'10", 275, lost his helmet. He's going to get a rest. <laughs> yeah, he got to come off for one play. Boy, if Brock would have turned that up, Mike, there was a big hole inside, but it's easy to see from up here. Third and eight from just inside the 25-yard line. 
Rams obviously in four down territory. Here. I would think. 314 left of the first quarter. Confusion, Mike. Yeah, you're going to have to call, call time out. You yeah. got seven seconds left on the play clock. There is no reason to rush it, especially in the first half. Yeah, you want to get this right. Time out. And there Chandler did the right yeah. thing. Yeah, had to. He did. He did the right thing. And it, in a case like that, you really need to. And a freshman doing that, Mike, that right. just shows you where he is seven games in. He has the right to do that. So he did it that time and a good move on his part. Big third down coming up. But before that, many companies give you insurance quotes, but only Nationwide backs up with dedicated licensed professionals and superior claim service. Mel and Jonathan Boucher, does he want to make ensure your new teen driver is stress-free experience? Make sure to ask about Nationwide Young Driver Discount. When you compare, nobody beats the Shays rates for young drivers. Call your hometown nationwide agents, John and Mel, at 724-224-4300 and get the coverage right for your family. They have evening and Saturday hours for your convenience. Remember, the AK Valley Bouchers and Nationwide are on your side. In last week's loss at Montour, the Rams had more punts than first downs. They punted it seven times and they had five first downs. They already have three first downs on this drive. By the way, Mike, I understand Peyton's places is going to be coming to Mel and John's uh, insurance agency in the Heights, so stay tuned tune for that. <laughs> I'd pay to see that. Third down. Long seven. Timmons is back. Here they come. Going to run a screen. screen. It's to Loveland. Makes one man miss, but they're waiting for him as he gets to the 25-yard line. Charlie Rossi stood him straight up over there. Also, number eight is Zach Blank. It'll be fourth down, and the Rams have a decision. I like what they did here, though, Mike. Something different. Set the screen pass up. And as you saw, South Fay a bit on it. They pursued it pretty strong. But again, their defensive backfield, led by Charlie Ross, who made the play. They're going to go for it, fourth and eight. Fourth down. Now Chandler looks for the signals at the sideline. They have to get it just inside the 17-yard line. Timmons back. He's going to throw a takeoff. Holly is down there. Oh, oh it's off his fingertips at the two-yard line. He was there. The Mike. ball was perfectly yeah. thrown. The coverage was good, but you're going to pull off an upset of this magnitude. You're going to make that play. That. Yep, yep. And the Rams Prime. turn it yep. over on downs. Hines going on defense, Mike. They'll start at defensive end, 50, Jeremiah Nelson. The other one is 59, Max Weston. You mentioned the man in the middle, 52, Joaquin Roman. Linebackers, 22, Brock White, 61, Kyron Long, 53, Darren Hildebrand, 54, Jeremiah Saunders, and number two, Caleb White. We'll get defensive backfield in a minute. Let's see if it goes quick this time, Mike. I couldn't even get the defense. God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Alameda is back. He looks. He's going to fire it deep. He's got Rossi down there, 50. Highlands, 45. And a touchdown saving tackle by Brock White at the 41 yard line. Mike, you said those receivers don't look like much. They're not very big, but boy, they, they get run, behind you in a hurry. They run yep. great routes. Yep. 25 and 9 is 34 yards. Alameda came in with 19.25, Mike, so he gets 75. He joins He's back. He club. looks. He fires, and it's incomplete. He tried to get it to Joey Audia, but the pass misfires. You know, Mike, it's not if, it's when he goes over 2,000. That'll be three years in a row with three different quarterbacks going over 2,000 yards. You talk about a system quarterback. Joe Rossi has a system here. No, there's no doubt about that. Plug and play, huh? Pretty much. He came into tonight at 1934, and he is already there. All right, 2,000-yard club. Alameda fires to the far side of the field. This one's caught, but quickly brought down. Pass pulled in by Ryan McGuire. White made the tackle for the Golden Rams. Defensive backs are going to have a hands full tonight. Number 10, DJ Loveland at one corner, Deshaun Hawley at the other, and the safety is Johnny Kreis. Third and six. Be nice if we're going to hold him right here, huh, Mike? It would be. McGuire's first catch of the night. He had a big game last week against Knock. And Alameda's back. He looks. He's going to throw it deep. He's got a man down there. And coming back with the adjustment. Making the catch is McGuire. And he's down. Or Audi, I'm sorry. It's Joey Audi at the four-yard line. White made the tackle. Caleb. But again, he had been, never saw the ball, Mike. He was looking up at the receiver and not the ball. And can't do that with a kid like 
LM80. He'll make you pay the price. And quickly First into the end zone. The five, and they fire it over there. And it might as well get it to the guy that got him down there. It's Audia, and it's a South Bay a touchdown. Back to back five yard passes, huh? Alameda is nine for 10, I think. It's just so hard to tell. <laughs> They're just going so fast. Does move them quick. And South Bay leads it 13 to nothing. McGuire's on for the extra point at 115 left of the first quarter. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Well, Mike, one, there's a big turnover, yep. 115 left in the quarter, and South Fayette marches it. Five plays, 75 yards, and it took them a minute and one second. Yikes. BJ Sports located 1605 Freeport Road in Toronto Heights. Been outfitting our local teams and great sports fans in the AK Valley for the past 50 years. When it comes to all your sporting good needs, look no further than BJ Sports. Glenn Mills and his friendly staff, Bill Easley on my left, provide you with that personal touch, customized high school jackets, team uniforms, trophies, plaques, you name it, they got it at BJ Sports, and you can't beat the price. Open 9 to 5:30 weekdays and Saturdays 9 till noon. Stop in today or give Glenn a call at 724-226. 2762, five decades says it all, BJ Sports. I have Alameda nine for 10 for 121 yards and two touchdowns. And 14 nothing Lions. 26 touchdowns now in the year. 65 consecutive conference wins. The last time they lost was on October 21st, 2011 to Seton LaSalle. They lost that game and they were in double, old double A, 33 to 10. Not that I'm counting, but it's been 2,913 days since they lost a conference game. You are counting. McGuire will kick it off. And Loveland takes it at the 15 on the run. 25, 30, 35, 40. Loveland to the 45, and another good return for Highlands out to the 48-yard line. D.J. Loveland. Excellent field position for the goal and Rams. Right now we have to take advantage of it. Like Alameda joins uh, Drew Saxon, who three years ago threw for 2,749 yards. And last year, Jamie Devon, he threw for 3,211 yards and 45. And they had to bring him in. Right, West LA game. He was transfer. transfer and they had the Brumbaugh brothers before that and then Saxton had the big game here he threw for 405 here which was the stadium record it lasted for not even a year because then Seth Cohen broke it against Newcastle and we'll talk a lot about that game next week because that was the last time they were here 48 47 overtime game and Cohen went for I believe 412 that night and Mike, if these guys are system quarterbacks, and they won 65 games, right, you said? Yep. Conference. Why aren't more people copying? Well, it's called athletes and coaching. Nice run by Brock White. Zigs and zags inside the 45 and down to the Lions' 40-yard line. Well, being 6'4 doesn't hurt, but, I mean, they're running a system. And they also have superior athletes. They have These guys are – and they're obviously taught to do it from the time they're out of the womb. Yeah, but, Mike, last year, bring a kid in from West A. He runs the system. He's had one year experience with the. You think they hadn't had their eye on him? So you're telling me West A's the farm club? Maybe in that case. <laughs> they picked a good time to poach with Palco leaving. This is White again. White makes a move and gets stuck as he gets to the 47 yard line. Franklin makes the stop. That's Andrew Franklin. Not to be confused with Quentin. Andrew's number five, Quentin's number 52. What I'd like to know is what his passing stats were at West Allegheny. They don't throw at West Allegheny. That's why I transferred. Or they didn't when Bob was there. I don't know what my Olivo's doing with him this year, if they're throwing it much or not. He, he liked to run the Wildcat at West A. That was, he didn't throw when his own kid was the quarterback, so that'll tell you But he had what he wanted to do. 31 seconds left of the quarter. 
Uh, second and eight, Highlands, on the West Alligator. See, you got me doing it. The South Bay at 38. <laughs> and the give is Ball's to – Well, that's – he's dead, down. Yeah. The give is to Caleb White, and he was thrown back hard. They're probably going to give him the original line of scrimmage, which was the 38. It'll be no gain. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter here at Golden Ram Stadium on homecoming, and South Fayette leads it 14 to nothing. We're going to do homecoming tonight, correct? Yeah, we'll be there at halftime. You want to stay tuned for that, and we'll have the winners for you. Um, and Julie will get those, and the Rams going to try to run one here? Looks no. Like they can't. There's no time left. That's the end of the first quarter, as I said a moment ago. 14 nothing. South Fayette leads it. Another Highlands football season can mean only one thing, and that's postgame at the Anchor in Natrona Heights. Joe, Andy, and Dee continue that family tradition, started by their parents way back in 1953. A great home-cooked meal without having to do the cooking. Original Anchor Burger is always a fan favorite. Signature season wings, daily specials, the blue plate special, whatever you want, they have it for you on the menu, even liver and onions on Wednesday. And whatever you do, don't forget the popcorn. The kitchen's open till 11, so there's no better way to kick off your football weekend than with friends and family at the Anchor Inn on Freeport Road, Natrona Heights. Welcome aboard. Got a text today. Meet you at the watering hole after the game. Yes. So that's the Anchor Inn. And we'll we will have our water. Yep. Always come up and say hello to us if you're there. Yeah, please. By the way, Mike, uh, happy birthday to Kevin Linza. Remember Kevin Linza? I remember number 34, I believe. For he the Rams. is teaching in Maryland, and he is a big fisherman. And when I mean big, I mean you two big, making really? lots of money in these uh, different tournaments. What I remember Kevin for, and I confirmed with Bill Heasley, he got a personal foul call against him in a knock game for fighting with his own players. Yeah. He was straightening <laughs> everyone out yeah. in the they, huddle. He didn't feel they were blocky enough for him. And uh, you talk about a fierce competitor. Remember See, he that, played basketball. That's a house of horrors out there. You yeah. know what it's like trying to play out there. <laughs> but he played basketball, too. He was not he the did. best basketball player, but I'll tell you what, he's a tough kid that didn't like to lose, and I will take those guys any day to week. Yeah, you betcha. Timmons is back. He's going to fire it to the corner. Johnny. And, oh, great play by Christ playing defense. Saved an interception. He knocked it away from uh, from Charlie Rossi. That, that was a great play by Johnny. A, a, as good a play as any defensive back will make all year. And he had a chance at it, Mike. He really did. He cut inside there. That's a good matchup for the Rams. Though. Charlie Rossi, not that big compared to Johnny. Fourth and eight. What will the Rams do? Rossi, 5'8", Mike. you got to take advantage of that. They're going for it. Why not? And they are. Timmons makes the call at the line of scrimmage. He's back. Has time. He's going to throw it. Christ makes there. the catch. He's at the 20. He 15, 10. Touch Johnny Christ for a Highlands touchdown. What a move he made. Great throw by Timmons. And the Rams strike from 38 yards on fourth down. And that time, Mike, they took advantage of that matchup. I'd go back to it. You can't teach 6-5. No, you cannot. A 38-yard touchdown pass. Johnny's caught two for 53. Chandler's five of eight for 64 yards. Jockham off with the extra point. Brandon Jockham will kick it. Six seven, girls holding again. Seven oh, for ten. Uh, they had trouble uh, yeah. with it. And a kick is no good. Remember, Mike, uh, Lana broke his hand a couple weeks ago in a JV game. Looked like he had a little trouble handling that snap. But the Golden Rams are on the board. They are. 11.45 left of the first. And the Rams are on the board on the Christ. 38-yarder. The Rams convert on a fourth down there. And, Mike, all the touchdowns tonight have been through the air. Three of them, that's correct. Ron Gillette Tony and Service, a registered contractor certified in PA state inspections and emissions. Call Gillette today for all your towing, paving, excavating, hauling, demolition, and yes, we need to say with the rain coming in tomorrow, snow removal needs. Not quite yet. Planning a cleanup, run a 10 yard cup box and help you out get rid of all your old stuff. Gillette Towing, fully licensed, insured, bonded, certified, and owns all their own state of the art equipment. Gillette's a product, A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Call Gillette. 
Charlotte to 724-226-1222. Phones answer 24-7, 365. All emergency calls handled. Always person to person. Find them on the web at rongelettehink.com or on Facebook, Ron Gillette Inc. Towing and more. Ron Gillette Towing and Services with the AK Valley since 1965. Big game in the Northwest 8. Knock leading Newcastle 7 0 first quarter. We'll keep an eye on that one. We could have a Newcastle coming in here desperate next week as I think it's going to come down to them and Montour for that last spot. The Rams kick it short again and it comes right to Snyder. He grabs it on a bounce and falls on it at the 47 yard line. Giving him field position like that's not exactly optimal. Yeah, Mike, the only thing I'd say is if you recover, great. If you don't recover, looks like they can take it 95 yards anyway. Well, so, yeah. it, it, that's always my old thing. It doesn't matter where you give them the ball, but they, we didn't have any chance to get that one. They are the defending 4A champs. They beat Thomas Jefferson last year, and they seem to be slugging out the last few years. They lost three of their four top wide receivers, but again, doesn't look like uh, any problems. They just plug in place. First down Lions on their 48-yard line. And the handoff is to Franklin. Franklin over the 50. And you see Drake Burford had him by the ankles and wouldn't let go. But it's still a solid game for Franklin. He gets about five across midfield. Drake's a wrestler, Mike. He put a wrestler move on him there. Here they go quick again. it again. Franklin hit by Joaquin Roman at the line of scrimmage and nothing doing. Roman had him and Saunders out. Drew Franklin, Mike, is their leading rusher from last year at 833 yards, average 5.9 per carry. I don't know if he was dealing with something last week, but Shea Aiken got the line share of the carriers. He was in there running back. Third down and five. They do have a punter. Knock did make them punt last week. I checked. Hmm. Alameda's back. He's out of the pocket. Now he's going to run for it. Saunders and he barely gets yeah. there. Saunders knocked him out, but I think he made it. At just inside the 45-yard line. I don't know now. I don't think so. Yeah, it looks like he's a little short. He didn't get there. And I'm sure they're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and one. Birdie picks Safe at 35-7. Fumbler did the same. Locks and dams also, all against the Golden Rams. Right? Opponents this year, 63% on fourth downs against this Highlands defense. Alameda Mike, 6'4". He's a big kid. Huh? Fourth and a he half fumbled. a yard, and, and he fumbled it, and he Who's got it got back, it? and he got the first down Stop. because of it, I think. It depends where they mark it. Franklin fumbled it. He got a good turf bounce. It bounced right back up to him, and it might be ahead of the chains. Saunders was on top of him along with Joaquin Roman. Let's see where they mark it. Joey Audi is signaling yeah, first down. Yeah. Franklin signaling first down. What a break for the Lions. First and ten. And that's when you know yeah, when things are going your way. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. That ball bounced right back up to him. And that's not a round ball either. Well, you get much better truer bounces on this turf than you ever did on the old grass surfaces, that's for sure. We just need a break, Mike. Can you get the ball back there for down 14-6? Ten minutes to go here in the second quarter. You're in business. Not now, though. Okay. Old tough. And he gives us to Franklin again. He had a little bit of trouble with a snap again. The Rams battling for it. And that's when you got a man hold. He took it away. Yes. He took it. The Rams should have the football. It was taken by Nelson. That, there was no whistle. There was no whistle. And they're going to give him the ball to South Fayette. You're kidding me. There was no whistle blowing there. And he took the ball away. They were marking it down. Wow. And Nelson came out of there with a the football. That was a break we needed, Mike. I thought we had it there. Here we go again. And this time, Joaquin says no. And Franklin's hitting the backfield for a loss at the 42-yard line. Joaquin Roman, 6'5", 290. Mike, he's beating that guy at the line of scrimmage. Fourth tackle. Nelson ends up with seven. Third and eight. Well, the Rams did not get the benefit of the call there. Four wides. Frank on the setback. Namon Alameda, the quarterback. Sean Blitz. Play clock down to 10 as Alameda looks over to Joe Rossi and his staff on the sidelines. 
Play clock at three. Alameda is back. Has time. Too Looking. Time. I guess there might have been holding, but none called. And it's caught. Dropped at the turf. Joey Audia had it and lost it at the 23-yard line. Boy, it really looked like yeah, he had time the, the time, left tackle, Dom Thomas, had the habeas grabus on the Rams' right tackle that time. There is a marker, is there? Yep. They're in punt formation. It should be holding against South Fiat, and it is. Yep. Rams decline it. And the Lions will have to punt. McGuire, the loneliest guy in town, their punter, doesn't do much. He's going to get a chance here. And you got to watch this here, the, where the field position is. Rams send two men back. Loveland and Brock White. 8.45 left first half, 14-6, to six, South Fayette. With, he I says with a ball, question yeah. mark at the end of it. Here's the kickoff, the punt. Ram's going to let it go. Now White goes back and gets it and comes forward up over the 10 to the 13-yard line. Tristan Bedillion gets down there and trips up Mr. White. You can see the Rams wearing the pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Pink socks, some pink wristbands and whatnot. So the Rams get the ball back, down only a touchdown. It's one of the few times I'll say that was a good thing to pick the ball back up to the 7-yard line. It was going to be down inside the goal line. He got 7 yards out of it. So go Rams in the shadow their own goal line, but not quite yeah, back not at the one. Great field position. Rams, the field position's been a problem for them this year. They've only started eight times across the 50-yard line. Opponents have started 20 times in Highlands territory. There's hidden yards on special teams. They give the white, and there's not much there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. The Lions have Quentin Franklin, the big 275-pound defensive tackle down there for the tackle. Right, number 59, Don Thomas. He's a Division I recruit. He's 6'4", 290. They return five on offense and five on defense from last year's championship team. Second and ten for Highlands. Trailing at 14-6. He was a big part of that last year, too. And Timmons is back, and he throws it complete. This is Kreiss at the 20. And they ride him down across the 20 at the 23-yard line. Tristan Bedillion and Ryan McGuire combined to make the tackle. It'll be short of the first down, and the Rams will have about a yard to go. Third and one. 73 yards now for Chandler Timmons on nine attempts. And 62 of them to Johnny on three yeah. catches. Third down and one. It's a long, it's a good solid one, a long one. I formation. White and white. Timmons turns to give to Brock. First down, Highlands across the 15 to the 16. Maybe, well, just at the 15, they'll stand him up. But it's enough to move the chains, and the Rams do it at 7-15 first half. The Rams already have more first downs tonight than they had all last week at Montour. 7-14 to go here in the second quarter, just trailing 14-6. to Golden Rams in business here. By the way, South Moreland, congratulations to them. The long drought is over. They made the playoffs. They got in last week. They didn't win, but everything else fell their way. For the first time since 1979, South Moreland is in the playoffs, and that leaves Leechburg as the longest drought since 1988. We will not be shut out this year, Mike, the AK Valley. We got shut out last year in the playoffs. Here's White. This is Caleb. Spins and turns. A Ram player down and not getting up as Caleb White is to the 27-yard line. Shawnee Christ. Yeah. Barely getting up. And guess what? Charlie Rossi is not getting up for South Fayette either. So they're going to take a look at Charlie. We'll take a timeout as Johnny comes limping off as both trainers put to work here. 6.38 left first quarter. South Fayette 14, Highland 6. We'll take a timeout and be back right after this. Charlie Rossi had help off the field. Johnny Kreis on the near side trying to run it off. It's second down and eight for Highlands on their 27, 6.29 to go. First half, South Fayette only up 14-6. They scored the first two touchdowns, and then the Rams drove down and put one on the board themselves. Here's the give to Brock White. Nice Finds goal. a hole, head down across the 30, and close to a first down to the 34. It'll be about a yard short. Logan Yater, the sophomore, probably in there for Charlie, made the tackle. It'll be third and one. Good hard run for White. Good news, Johnny Christ back in the lineup. 
Big, big, big play. Yep, right here. That Brock take with the head of steam, Mikey. Third down a yard. And they go the with last the time, same yeah. eye formation they did on the last short yardage play. And they give us to Brock. Oh, he, he fumbles. He forgot something. And South Fayette recovers at the 26-yard line. Number 54 is Keon Johnson, a sophomore defensive end. Yeah, Mike, he was looking at that hole, and you got to get ball security first. He did not do it. South Fayette's going to have a short field, Mike, and they take advantage of these short fields. The Rams are minus 13 this year, and they are 18 giveaways on the season. They've only taken it away five times. And that's been a big yeah, problem. That makes you two and five, Mike. And as well as the defense play, that doesn't do them any favors. And again, this is the 21st time that the opponents have started on the Highland side of the field this year. That's tough on a defense. First and ten for the Lions. And Alameda wants to throw it. He looks. He fires to the sideline, and it's incomplete out of bounds. Nice catch over there by uh, Joey Audia, but good coverage by Alameda Sean Sean Holly. that one. Did you see that, Mike? He did. He throws it from the hip. Yep, threw it across his body. Mike, you mentioned Southmoreland. We have a local in the playoffs this year, finally. Last year, we were shot out. Paula Ridge is in. Didn't Freeport make it last year? They were 5-4 and four and lost their playoff game to go to 5-5. Five and five. I'm pretty sure. I think they were it if they were. If not, you're right. I'll have to go back and look at my notes. Oh, nobody was over 500 That's it. Last year. I think they were the only one. Audio. Makes the catch 20. First down to the 15 to the 14 yard line. Burford on a tackle, but not until he picks up first nine yards. Along with Caleb White. 10 yard gain to the 15. They beat Citadel Valley tonight, Mike. They get uh, home field advantage too, and uh, they're owed a game, so it'd be good news for them. Four catches for 62 for Joey Audia. First down at the 15. Alameda quickly to the near side of the field. That's Audie at the 10. Head down and he gets to the eight yard line as Loveland knocks him off his feet. They're gonna mark it at the nine. Second and four. Now they're really spread up, Mike. Five wide, and whistle we have whistles before. before the play. We'll see what this is all about. Alameda was going left. You see the routes they run. False start against South Fayette. We'll take it. Says Mike Gaffney. Only a third penalty. Mike. Yep. Two for the Lions, yep. right, and one for Highlands. Is that it? Yep. Second and nine. 4.41 left of the first half. South Fayette 14, Highland 6. Tonight in conference, we have Montour and Ambridge. You mentioned Newcastle at Knock. Non-conference, Blackhawk at Indiana and Quaker Valley at Beaver. Franklin is the setback. Alameda is back. Alameda holds on to it. Rolling, throwing. It is caught at the five. It's going to be a first down to the three yard line. Grace and White. And with Rossi out of the game, Alameda really going to Audia. Audia came into the game, their leading receiver at 36 catches. He has three on this drive. Kid looked like Mason Rudolph that time, Mike, uh, thrown across his body. Usually that's bad news, but they made it into a first down. Island's going to call timeout. Yeah, you got to make a stand here, Mike. Can't let it get away. Audi has caught six for 79. Well, the wireless zone is the largest independent Verizon wireless franchise in America, offering the most popular smartphones. Yes, the new iPhone 11 is out. Tablets, connected devices, all the latest accessories with winning customer service. And remember, Verizon's 5G wireless network is closer than you think. It'll be the first in the United States with both fixed and mobile locations. Stop in today to see what makes Verizon the world's largest and most reliable network. They have 12 area locations, including six in the AK Valley. For you Rams fans out there, your wireless zone headquarters are in the Trona Heights at the Walmart Plaza or at the Pittsburgh Mills Mall next to J.C. Penney's and across from Victoria's Secret. Or find the Wireless Zone store nearest you simply by visiting wirelesszone.com. 4.04 to go in the half. Hines has to make a defensive stand here. It's going to be tough, though. First and goal at the three. 
Franklin is the sidecar. And Alameda's back, and he throws it into the end zone, and it's incomplete. They take different pages together there. T.J. Loveland on the coverage. Second and goal. Four minutes even left, first half. On a beautiful night at Highlands. We're still in shorts. Strangely enough, huh? Not next week. I think we can agree on that. Huh? Got my car to set all day, 97 degrees. Right <laughs> Here's the give to Franklin. Cuts it. Franklin, touchdown, South Fayette. Well, you don't see that that often, Mike, on the ground. They actually ran South one Fayette. in. Yeah. Franklin scores his ninth touchdown of the year, and the Lions lead it 20-6. to six. What could have been, Mike? Now the turnover hurt. And again, Highlands minus 13 this year. Ryan McGuire is on for the extra point. Logan Yader is the holder. It had been Rossi, but Rossi left with an injury. Good hold. The ball is down, and McGuire's kick is good. And South Fayette, with 3.55 left of the first half, extends their lead to 21-6. to Oh, Mike, again, there's two opportunities. One time we had the ball, couldn't get it in the end zone. They came back and scored quickly. That time we were going for it. Third and short, fumble the ball. Short ports they take advantage of. It. They do. Last week in conference, South Bay had beaten Hawk. We mentioned 42 to 7. Blackhawk over Newcastle 26 to 6. And Beaver beat Ambridge 20 to 7. We talked about the conference earlier, what's going on as far as playoffs go. Of course, Highlands, with any hope, needs to win here. Um, if, if, if they want to keep themselves in it. It really looks like it's going to come down to Newcastle, Montour, and Knock, and that huge game going on at Knock tonight. After one, Knock leads at 7 nothing. If Knock wins, they clinch a playoff spot. If South Fayette wins here tonight, they clinch a playoff spot. And that leaves you down to Blackhawk, who has a non-conference game tonight. Blackhawk, Newcastle, and Montour are really going to be fighting for two spots. South Fayette may be able to clinch the conference tonight, too, Mike. Knock and Blackhawk are four and That two. is possible. Yep. Um, Knock really needs to win because they're in kind of in free fall right now, and you'd kind of like to see them right themselves there and get themselves in. Mods were beat or lost to Newcastle, so if it comes down to that. This is White at the 12. 20, 25, 30, 35. Boy, the Rams have had good returns they tonight. Have, like. White all the way out to the 41. The best of the year, really, yep. for Highlands on kickoffs. Now we have to do something with it. First down, 345. Plenty of time left. And the Rams have started at the 41 here. Their field position has been at their 38, their 47, and then the 14, and now the 41. So for the most part, it's, it's gone well in that department anyway. Mike, we have the same number of wins as Montour and Newcastle, too. The only problem is we have three losses. They only have two. Four wides. So we need help. The give is to White. Off the right side. Maybe a couple up to the 43-yard line. But first things first, we have to take care of our own business. That is White's 11th carry for 40 yards. Brock with an outside shot to get to 1,000 this year. You need to average over 100 the last three games to do it. As a sophomore, that would be an accomplishment. Yep, we have Newcastle next week here, and then we're at, at Latrobe, Latrobe. And who knows what will happen that night. We're Latrobe in the not city, having right? a good year, yeah. We're in the city. Yeah, we're in the town. We're at Latrobe Memorial, where the Steelers do their Friday night's light, night lights practice. Yep, it's a Google Maps or downtown. It's an easy find, really. Oh. And the throw by Timmons is incomplete. He tried to get it to Johnny Christ, covered by Andrew Franklin. It'll be third down. And Andrew was one of those awkward positions, Mike, where his head was facing the receiver. He didn't even see the ball coming. He could have picked that off. Third and eight, less than three minutes left of the half. Remember, stay tuned. Halftime, we'll have homecoming for you. 
Remember, if any member of the football team happens to win homecoming king, they must turn in the crown for their helmet for the second half. WPIL rules mandate. Now, last year we had the homecoming queen on the team. J.C. Bowser, correct. She'll, She'll be back be to deliver tonight. the crown to this year's winner. So we look forward to that. Freshman soccer player up at Clarion, Mike. Two guys in motion. That's not good. Yeah. I think the Rams called time before they got caught. Yep. Khalil Long, who, again, we had mentioned hadn't played, and Brock White were both coming in the same direction, and that's not quite going to cut it. So the Rams call the timeout at 2.58 left of the first half. They trail it 21-6. to Mike, I know a lot of guys like to go to championship games, and uh, there's been a change in the venue and schedule. Is it for double A? And, yeah, 2A. It was scheduled for Rock Morris, but lo and behold, guess what? A scheduling. They've had all kinds of problems with their athletic department at Robert Morris recently, haven't they? Well, this one's more than a WPL, yeah, Mike. Robert Morris had a home game scheduled, and a WPL well, no, booked it. No, actually, Robert Morris booked it and didn't know that the Whippeal was playing on Saturday and not on Friday. It was not the Whippeal's problem. <laughs> they didn't check the date. According to the article I read, they... Well, according to the one that I read, they, oh, but that, they, mm. the media, you can't trust yeah. it. You read, did you read yours on Fox? Fake <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, here's what's happening. They're going to play 2A on November 23rd at noon at Norwood. And what that did, Mike, that necessitated them, necessitated them to lose a 5A game. Yeah, because they, the they, they want to have them on the same day at the same place. And they're doing that for TV. Third down. Timmons is back, and he throws it. Oh, oh, incomplete. Hit. hit a DJ in a helmet. DJ's helmet. He didn't turn around for it. Different pages together for the Rams there. Talk about accuracy. That was a pretty darn good toss. You know who was open was Deshaun Hawley on the sidelines. He had one-on-one coverage. I think he could have beat that guy. Fourth down. So that 5A game will be Norwin same day at 6 o'clock. What they're going to do, Mike, they're going to clear the stadium. And they say they're doing that for TV because of the setup. Hey, we did that. Uh, by the way, that knock game, Newcastle game's on Channel 22 tonight. Um, we did that at... Uh, in Mount Lebanon years ago with Riverview, if you remember, there were two games. It's a snowy day. There was snow on Friday. They moved everything back to Saturday. That's when we had the hunchback mice in the press box, if you remember. Did they clear the field, though? I'm not sure. We were in there early, I remember. Johnny got that one off late, but boy, he drilled. Bryce punts it. And back to the 24. This is Yader. That's a great 30. catch, too, Mike. And out to the 37-yard line, dragged down from behind by Tyrus Kerr. Over the shoulder catch that time. That saved him a lot of yards. 33-yard punt. So plenty of time for the yeah, Lions, 239. 239. And the Rams would do well to stop them here because they get the ball to start the second half. And the Rams' defense has held up very well tonight. Again, we mentioned it. If you missed last year's game, South Fayette put 54 up against us in the first half. First down at the 37. This is Adia in motion. And he's going to get it on a quick toss, Ooh, and he drops yeah, it. Were you sure he wasn't carrying that? And he got paid. Was that a football move, Tom? <laughs> paid the price that time. Brock White delivered the hit, even though he didn't catch the ball. Second and ten. Mike, the other four championship games still scheduled at Heinz Field for November 16th. So not only those two A and five A games not at Heinz Field, but they're later. Too. See what happened was last year it was Thanksgiving, and because Thanksgiving was a week earlier than it is this year, so they're playing on Saturday. It's actually not a week later. It's the Thanksgiving's a week later. That's the difference, and that's where the confusion came in. Thanksgiving was on the 22nd last year. Here comes the blitz. Alameda back with time, and he slings it over the middle. Got a man wide Whoa. open. Oh, what a hit. As Audi is hit, and now what's Christ going to get hit for? Did he hit him too hard? He certainly didn't hit him with his helmet. I can promise you that. He hit him with his with his arms like this in the chest. He didn't hit him in the head. This is a terrible call. It's a terrible call. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. I think they're even talking about do we pick it up or not. Look. It, it was a, he hit and, and a great play by Audia to hold on to it. Those were two kids playing hard football, and it should just be left alone. Agree 100%. Let's see, though. Well, 
he threw the flag. He so didn't he hit him. He call. didn't hit him in the head. He hit him in the chest, and he didn't hit him with his head. No. This reminds me of the pit play uh, with uh, Paris Ford last week. He got hit in the head, and he got thrown out of the game. So the other officials get together with Mike Gaffney. And they're going to call a penalty. Personal foul for what? He, he hit yeah, him. He yeah. hit him too hard. Yeah. Is that what it was? That's, it. That's a terrible call. So that'll give him 15 more. The original call was to the 28. I mean, you go down the middle, Mike. That's the price you pay. You're allowed to run there, but again, you're going to pay a price. First down at the 23. Bobble Almeida one, throws yeah, it. It's dropped yep. on the near side of the field. Number 16, the intended receiver, Javon Goodnight. Alameda bobbled the snap, and then the receiver bobbled the reception. The play was for 25 yards on the previous. And a great catch by Audie, and a great job to hold on to the ball. Yeah, it should be rewarded for that, but that's it. Second and 10 at the 23. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass at 219. Alameda fires, and it's caught. This is good night. Caught by Brock White and brought down at the 18-yard line. Brock's fourth tackle. They're going quick again. High snap. And five, and now they were messed with the ball there. That's going to be an illegal snap, I think. Exactly what it is. Alameda's gone for 178 already, which is already the most charts thrown for in a game against the Rams this year. Once again, quickly over the ball. Third and nine. Clock moving 147 to go. Comes everybody, Mike. And Alameda Army. fires, and it's caught. You sure his knee wasn't down when he caught it? Well, he's down now because Loveland puts him down to the ground. McGuire makes the tackle. Or McGuire brought down by Loveland to the 16-yard line. Fourth and a yard. Yeah, and they want to go quick here, Mike, because they make the first down and they need the time. 115, clock winding. Maybe not. No uh, back in there. Five wide. Alameda fires. Incomplete. The Rams availed. White had the coverage on the near side of the field. The intended receiver was Joey Audia, and the Rams hold them. One minute even, Mike. Does it, Highlands go and try to do anything, Mike, here? Well, you're down by two yeah. touchdowns. You kind of have to. Yep. Yeah. One minute. Chandler Tim is again 11 attempts tonight. Six completions, 73 yards, one touchdown. And the handoff is to White. And he gets to the 19. Three yard pickup. Tristan Bedillion, the outside linebacker there. His 12th carry for 43 yards. 44 seconds. The Rams get the ball to start the second half, but just like they did last week, they look like they're throwing up the white flag here at the end of the half. Thirteen seconds to go on a play clock. Remember, stay tuned. We'll have homecoming for you at halftime. Stats and all that good stuff. This is White. Brock across the 20 to the 22. He gets three more. And I think that's going to run the first half clock down to zeros. That is the end of the first half. Here at Highlands Golden Ram Stadium at homecoming with the score. The South Bay Lions 21 and the Highlands Golden Rams 6. We'll be back with stats, homecoming, and more right after this.